Okay, so in the first video this week, I introduced these five basic Taylor series. So what I'm going to do in this video is just derive them. So I'm going to derive these five series from the definition of Taylor series. And we'll just go through them in order, so I'll start with e to the x. Okay, so if you remember the definition of Taylor series, is that if we call it t of x the Taylor series, um, around the point A, say, then this is defined as the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of the function evaluated at the point A divided by n factorial and times x minus a to the power n. Okay. Now all of the basic ser series take a equals 0, so at a equals 0 we get that t0 of x is sum n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative at 0 divided by n factorial times just x to the n. Okay. So all of the basic Taylor series will have this form. Okay. So Taylor series of e to the x at a equals 0. So this one's very easy because you, you know that if you differentiate e to the x, it just stays the same. So therefore, all of the derivatives here have the same values. So specifically, f of x is e to the x. And then the derivative f prime of x is e to the x. f double prime of x is e to the x. And you see how it continues, right? So in the formula, we need to evaluate x equals 0. So therefore, f of 0 is e to the 0. That's 1 and f prime of 0 is e to the 0, which is 1, f double prime of 0, and so on. Okay, So in the Taylor series for e to the x, these derivatives of f are just all equal to 1. So therefore, you get that the Taylor series is equal to the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times x to the n, okay. because all of these are equal to 1. So if we expand that out, then n equals 0, you get 1, Remember that 0 factorial will at least define as being equal to 1. When n equals 1, you get plus x. When n equals 2, you get x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. Okay, so that's proved the result for e to the x. So next on our list is the Taylor series of cosine x. Um, but I think actually I'll do sine next because you'll see. You'll see why in a minute. So I'll do sine next. Number two. Euler series of sine x at a equals zero. So just as for the e to the x, you need to calculate the derivatives of the function. So f of x is sine x. f prime of x is cosine x f double prime of x is minus sine x, f third derivative is minus cos x, and the fourth derivative is sine x. And I'll stop there. So you see that sine x and cos x as well have the special property that after four derivatives you get back to where you started. So therefore it repeats. Okay. Now we can again evaluate these at the point x equals zero. So sine of 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1, minus sine of 0 is 0, minus cos of 0 is minus 1, and again, these will repeat as well. Okay, So here you get a, a series, these derivatives of f here go 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. Okay. So this is n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and so on. So if I write this out as a series, so the first one is 0. And the next one, when n equals 1, I get 1. So this gives me 1 times x. Then I get 0 times x squared. Then I get minus 1 times x cubed over 3 factorial. Then I get 0 times x to the 4, and then it will repeat. So the next one will be plus 1 times 
x to the 5 over 5 factorial, then 0, and so on. So if I get rid of the ones which are 0 anyway, this becomes x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial and so on. So you can hopefully guess the pattern. It's going up in the odd numbers, x to the n over n factorial when n is odd, and you also have this plus minus plus minus plus minus pattern. Okay, so you can write this as an infinite sum. One way you can get an infinite sum of only not odd numbers is instead of saying x to the n, you say x to the 2n plus 1. Then when n is 0, you get 1. When n is 1, you get 3. When n is 2, you get 5, and so on. So this counts through the odd numbers. Okay, and divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. So this sequence will give you x, x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the 5 over 5 factorial, and so on. But we also need to deal with this plus minus plus minus property. So the way you can get that is by adding or multiplying by minus 1 to the power n. You see that minus 1 to the power n, if n is even like minus 1 squared or minus 1 to the power 4, then you just get 1. And if n is odd, then this is like minus 1 cubed or minus 1 to the 5, then you get minus 1. So this minus 1 to the n term just goes 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, exactly as here. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. So that therefore gives you the result for sine. Now, I said I do sine first. The reason for this is if you do the Taylor series of cos x at a equals 0, you see that you start off with cos. Okay, And cos is the second entry in the sine series. So all it does is kind of shift all of these up one here. So instead of the sequence of derivatives of f's going 0, 1, 0, minus 1, they go 1, 0, minus 1, 0. Okay. In other words, the sine series only has odd derivatives non-zero. The cosine series will have only even derivatives non-zero. And again, these will go plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. Okay. So then the even derivatives, the even terms in this sum here, are going to be n equals 0, that's 1, n equals 2, that's x squared over 2 factorial, and again you have plus 1, minus 1 oscillations here. The next one is x to the 4 over 4 factorial, x to the 6 over 6 factorial, x to the 8 over 8 factorial. And hopefully you can see how the pattern is going and in a similar way to the infinite sum for sine you can write this down as x to the 2n so 2n just counts through the even numbers divided by 2n factorial and again minus 1 to the n gives you this repeating plus minus pattern okay so that's sine and cos so if we look again at our list next is log of 1 plus x so it has to be around a equals 0, it has to be log of 1 plus x, not just log of x, because log diverges as x goes to 0. Okay. <coughs> so let's work out this one, log of 1 plus x. So we'll do it in the same way here, calculating derivatives. So you get f of x is log 1 plus x. f prime of x is 1 over 1 plus x. f double prime of x is minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. f triple prime of x is plus 2 1 over 1 plus x cubed. I'll just do one more. This is minus 6, 1 over 1 plus x to the 4. Okay, probably I'll do one more because then you'll probably be able to see the pattern. The fifth derivative plus 24 
1 over 1 plus x to the 5. Okay. So we need to evaluate these at 0. So log of 1 is 0. 1 over 1 plus 0 is 1. Minus 1 over 1 plus 0 squared is minus 1. This one is plus 2. This one is minus 6. This one is 24. <coughs> so hopefully you can see the pattern. This is just giving you the n factorial series, right? Except it's not quite n factorial because this one, for example, is n equals 5, and 24 is 4 factorial. So in fact, it's n minus 1 factorial. So the general result is that it gives you n minus 1 factorial but you also have this plus minus plus minus and so before we've done minus 1 to the n here that's not right because for example minus 1 to the 5 is minus 1 but n equals 5 actually gives you a plus here so you need one extra minus so you make this n plus 1 here or n minus 1 doesn't matter either way. In fact, it's probably neater to make it m minus 1. Okay, so now we take this term for the nth derivative of f here, and we put it in this formula, and let's see what we get. Let's put that up there. Okay. So therefore, t0x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity the nth derivative, which we decided was n minus 1 factorial times minus 1 to the n minus 1, divided by n factorial times x sorry, to the power n. Okay, well first of all this isn't quite right, because you see the first term, if n equals 0, I should get 0 here minus 1 factorial in the case n equals 0 is not defined so really I have to start this sum off from n equals 1 now n minus 1 factorial and n factorial cancel mostly so this just gives you 1 over n times minus 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n so that's the answer what does this look like as a sum when n equals 1 I get this is 1 and I get x when n equals 2, this is minus a half, and I get x squared. When n is 3, this is plus a third, and x cubed. And minus a quarter, x to the 4, plus a fifth, x to the 5, and so on. So again, hopefully you can see the pattern. This number up in the power is the same as the number you divide by x, and you've got the plus, minus, plus, minus pattern again. Okay, so the final one is in some way similar to the log. It's 1 plus x to the p. So let's do that one too. Number 5. Okay, so f of x is 1 plus x to the power of p. So p can be any any, any real number. Okay, if you differentiate that, this gives you p times 1 plus x to the p minus 1. Differentiate again, p times p minus 1 times 1 plus x to the p minus 2. And you can see the pattern, right? p times p minus 1 times p minus 2. So each time you differentiate, you get another descending term here, p, p minus 1, p minus 2, p minus 3, p minus 4, and so on. Okay. And we can generalize this if we go to the nth derivative. For example, here's the third derivative. This is n equals 3. And you see that the lowest number here is 2. So the number here is 1 less than n. So therefore, the nth derivative is p times p minus 1 times blah, blah, blah 
all the way down to p minus n minus 1. In other words, p minus n plus 1 times 1 plus x to the p minus n. Okay, so that's the general term. And if we evaluate all of these at the point 0, this one gives you 1. This one gives you p. So 1 plus x to the p, if x is equal to 0, is just 1. So you just get the coefficients out the front. So this is p times p minus 1. This is p times p minus 1 times p minus 2. And the general one is p times p minus 1 times p minus n plus 1. And then this is 1. Okay, so therefore put this into the Taylor series formula and you get the first term is 1, so that's 1, then you get this times x, so that's px, then you get this times x squared divided by 2 factorial, so let's plot p, p minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared, p, p minus 1, p minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed, and so on. The nth term is p, p minus 1, dot, 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 p minus n plus 1 over n factorial times x to the n. Okay. So that's all of those Taylor series. Um, I just want to say a couple of more things about this one, 1 plus x to the p. There's a few examples where, which are much simpler than this general form. Okay. In particular, if p is equal to minus 1. If p is equal to minus 1, then let's just write it out and see what we get. We get 1 minus x plus minus 1 times minus 2 over 2 factorial x squared plus minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus minus 1 times minus 2 times all the way down to minus n over n factorial times x to the n. Okay. So you can hopefully see here that the terms on the top cancel the factorial on the bottom, and all you've got here is minus to the power n times x to the n. So this is just 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the 4 dot dot dot, okay, which we can write down as an infinite sum minus 1 to the n times x to the n. Okay, so that's a very simple result. So in other words, this means that 1 over 1 plus x Taylor series is equal to 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the 4 and so on. Okay, so equals here, I have you have to be a bit careful. It's not really equal because as we said in the original video, this sum doesn't always converge. These two things are only equal if x is size is less than 1. Okay, the radius of convergence is equal to 1. So if x is a half, this is true. If x is 2, this is not true. So here equals, you have to be a bit careful. Okay, one final note. If I replace x in this by minus x, then you see that minus x here just gives me plus x. So I get 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x is equal to 1. This becomes plus x. x squared and minus x squared are the same, so this stays the same. Minus x cubed cancels this minus, and I get plus x cubed. And hopefully you can see they all become plus. In other words, this is equal to the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, of x to the power n. Again, equals only if x has modulus less than 1. Okay. So this series is quite an important series in mathematics and, and turns up quite a lot in physics too. This is called the geometric series. Okay. So something times some, plus something squared plus something cubed plus something to the 4 and so on. That's known as the geometric series. And what we've shown here is that the sum of the geometric series is equal to 1 over 1 minus x provided that mod x is less than 1. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Then I've proved all of those basic Taylor series 
talk to you now and in the next video I'm going to look at some examples of some more complicated series.